<laughs> Hi, welcome to Action Spencer. <laughs> do you want to explain what we're doing? <laughs> do I? Um, no. Mari, take yeah. over. Alright. Today. No. <laughs> okay. You're the professional. Hi, welcome to Action Spencer. Today is going to be like a different kind of video. We're going to talk about like stuff we use to manage our chronic pain. Something I'm like, oh my gosh, I have Mari here, now I have to do the Buzzfeed like, <laughs> Mari has been experiencing chronic pain. Okay. But it's just like, if you want to give people like a little introduction. Yeah, like back, round, on my back, which hurts. No. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I have chronic pain. And it's mostly like muscly type tension pain, mostly in my back, but also in the rest of my body. Um, so I have a few things that I use, and it's yeah, specifically for like muscle, <laughs> muscle tension type pain, and all of them are cheap. <laughs> I did like one of them's expensive. But you got it second hand. Yeah, yeah. It's still pretty expensive. Yeah. I guess I have two things that I use like literally every single day. One of the main things that I use like every time or almost every time I leave the house are um, I have like walking boots, which definitely are not cheap. And uh, yeah, and I wear them every yeah, almost every time I, I leave the house except for when it's really, really hot. And they really help to like stop a lot of my pain like m my pain like started in my feet like I guess the most or like that's where I recognized it as pain the most so I sort of had like a journey like upwards <laughs> in that respect um and whilst like I still do experience a lot of pain like standing up even when I am wearing my boots they definitely um are really supportive and like that's um good and then the other thing that I use like all the time which is a more recent thing. Obviously before I had like a heat pad I did use hot water bottles but they obviously aren't as effective or like it's kind of different and like I mean sometimes they can be better than a heat pad because they can get into like a, a different position in a more easy way but generally um, they're a bit harder to work with because they cool down so quick basically. But yeah so I use a heat pad for my back generally and I, I just like lie on it every night for a couple of hours at least and then unless my pain is really bad I can just like sleep without it on and stuff so that's you know good but then sometimes you have to use it still but yeah I have had like a lot of problems with my back like for a while I was like <laughs> waking up from excruciating back pain wedging myself into like a upright position and then I was so fatigued that I, even though I was in like excruciating pain I'd fall asleep again <laughs> um <laughs> And like it took me a while to be like, I should get a heat pad. <laughs> so yeah, this is me telling you you should buy a heat pad if you think you you need one. Um, yeah. 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 I also have a heat pad. That's great. I also mostly use it on my back. But it helps for both like the more like muscly pain in my upper back to like release the muscles a bit. And it also just helps when I have like, I don't know, lower back pain, which doesn't feel as muscly, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I think also good for like menstrual cramps and any hot water bottle things. This is the heat pad I got for like £20 back in the day. Works great. <laughs> Sometimes doesn't work, but... Well, yeah. <laughs> I bought it cheap. <laughs> Another cheap thing is just like a random... An avocado. Like, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, a little ball. And... They're really cheap to get because like a lot of sports people use them, <laughs> so you can get them really easily. Essentially I use this to massage parts of my body, again mostly my back, so I can do it to myself like this, or I can do it like against the wall and get that in most places. Cool. Or, or yeah, um. or I ask Adam Marie to do it. <laughs> Something that's more of like, I guess like an approach to, to chronic pain or like managing it is just like distracting yourself and I think you know you do have to be like intentional about what distractions you're using because I think it can be easy to sort of create more problems for yourself by choosing not especially helpful in the long term distractions. So like for example if I'm outside 
I often listen to music almost the whole time. Not just for this reason, but one of the main reasons is that like it really helps me keep walking even when I'm in a lot of pain because I'm not thinking about how much my feet hurt. <laughs> um, it's like I guess what like people who run do, right? <laughs> like people or, like people who cycle or hike or shit like that. Yeah, it's always just, like, music like to like steps out of the house. Yeah, I'm already like listening. You're like I'm pushing through the pain. I can do this. <laughs> My pump up walking playlist. <laughs> yeah, and like I can often notice how like how much I rely on music to help me when like my phone dies and I can't listen to music anymore and I'm like, oh, I've got to keep walking. Oh no. <laughs> and obviously, it like depends on where the pain is and you know just like how fatigued I am generally. But like things like reading and also especially like listening to audiobooks and like escaping into like other worlds and other people's worlds um, I find is a really important part of my like survival distraction life um, and you know watching like both shitty and interesting TV but generally more shitty TV that's more useful I think. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is the one expensive thing I've bought for chronic pain and it cost me around 70 pounds second hand and it's one of those like massage pistols, guns <laughs> Blah blah blah. Unfortunately, I can't show you how it works because the charger broke, and it's one of those stupid, not like normal chargers. So I can't buy a new one. Yeah, it does have like a fun yeah. texture, and it also like you, you you can like swap these out with like things of different shapes, um, which I think is funny. But yeah, I tried to buy one of those like universal comes with seven different attachment chargers, and it still didn't fit. So I don't know quite what to do with this, but for the time that it worked, it was great. It was amazing. Uh, it really just goes at it, you know. Um, <laughs> we'll say if you, some of them are like 300 pounds, which I think is way too much. But like, I think 70 pounds is like fine. It, it like, it's, it's good. It works. It has a lot of like levels. Yeah. I guess instead, sometimes I use the somewhat inferior <coughs> massage wand <laughs> that does something similar but it doesn't you know go in and out yeah. it just vibrates still would recommend I think that's a good tip to be honest like yeah if you have a vibrator you could use it to help with your chronic <laughs> pain yeah especially if it's like neck or jaw yeah, like yeah, you don't need just, like a very strong yeah. one I get like quite a lot of hand pain sometimes and and, well, maybe not hand pain, although sometimes, <laughs> whatever, I get all, all the pain, it seems like, but, you know, when I get pain in, like, my wrists and things, so I do have some wrist braces and, like, just sort of wrist, like, grips, basically. Um, I also have some arthritis gloves, although I only have one glove of that now, so I have stopped wearing it because I don't want to be, like, lopsided, it doesn't, I don't like that. Uh, but I need to get some more because they were good. But, yeah, so I just have those kinds of things that help me... Uh, like it helps deal with the pain but it also helps me like do things that maybe I like just have to do so like eat or whatever I mean sometimes I also use it when I'm like doing my fun knitting time but you know I'm allowed to have some joy even if it hurts <laughs> something that's useful as well as having like a good pillow or like multiple pillows especially and especially like larger ones so you can like wedge them into the right position that you need I also find that if you don't have pillows that actually having like large uh, like soft toys are actually extremely useful for this. It's mm. so, like I have a really big Yungle Scog um, <laughs> and like he you know he can prop me up and like you know I can like wedge him under a hip or whatever and it's useful sometimes. Yeah I associate it a bit with like those like I don't know pregnant mm -hmm. like breastfeeding pillows that you can get and stuff because I my, I would sometimes use these as a kid while like holding babies because mm. you're a weak child and you uh -huh. want the hand support and stuff and that was always really convenient and now I use a lot of pillows I have also, and this is kind of sad and disgusting but I've trained myself to just sleep straight on my back to like fuck Whoa. stuff up as little as possible Whoa. but like sometimes that's just not really fun, not really comfortable and then I tend to use pillows and other things to like prop me up that's so powerful. or like hold something so that I don't um, hurt my chest by lying like this but then I open it up a bit more but it can still like hold something and, and rest my arms I didn't know you, you lie straight straight on my back a little time I think, yeah. yeah I know 
And it's so gross because I love sleeping on my side, and, but I don't sleep on my stomach usually anyway. Oh, so no, I like, can never do that. Yeah. I like lying on my side with like one leg facing one direction, <laughs> downwards, like that's... I mean, I don't like sleep directly on my stomach, but sometimes mm. I do love like like a sort of twisty. Yeah, I mean that's my dream position. It's like, like one knee up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things I do is yoga. I tend to only do like really like a really short amount, and you know even when people are like, oh don't worry, like I don't know this class is really chill, blah blah blah, like. I never do that. I just do like sometimes less than ten minutes, but like you know, ten minute like yoga sessions for like chronic pain or like I, I do a specific one that's like yoga for fibromyalgia to the extent that like I can pretty much remember it without following the video. But I also often just like really shorten the length that various positions are being held for or done for, which is like the only way that I can get myself to do it, you know, because I'm just so tired and often it is quite painful. But it does definitely help with like, especially with my back and sleeping and stuff, like it helps with that and it also is just like, it's quite overwhelming to be present in a body that's like so often just really fucked up, but doing yoga, especially doing like child's pose or whatever it's called and things like that, is like a really nice way to come back into yourself and be like, like I'm here and uh, yeah, I'm here. Okay, I... I don't know if I can get this in frame, but you know, it doesn't matter. You, you get the, you get the picture, yes? Yeah, One of these, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know, balls that people used in the home workouts in the 80s. Um, I see you set for sensory integration, like, oh, nice. See, so very versatile. Um, I bought this because when I did some, like, physical therapy training stuff last year, um, the trainer uh, showed me a lot of different uh, exercises to do with that and it's really it's like very cheap as like a workout tool or whatever and you can use it both to make exercises easier or to make exercises harder but I also sometimes just use it to sit on because that's like a lower back stretch and that feels really nice like the main thing maybe that I use it for like as support during a workout is to like have it against the wall behind my back when I do squats so then I'm not going to fall, like I can lean on it and not fall over and that's a really nice way of doing squats if you are scared of falling over and don't have a lot of, I don't know, strength or confidence. Unfortunately it does take up a lot of space, mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you have space, and you're worth it. This dog. cost me like, oh yeah my dog is scared of it, which yeah. is really funny. <laughs> this cost me like, it was second hand, it cost me like five pounds, four pounds, something like that, something cheap. And another thing that is like cheap because sports people use it because like the foam rollers they became quite popular like a few years ago you can use it to roll your muscles on but you should be careful because you're putting your whole weight onto like these and it can also make your muscles like hurt more <laughs> if you're not being like slow and careful but they are really nice especially when your like muscle pain is just so bad that it's just like so painful and you just want a different kind of pain this is great it, this one has like two Two ones, this one is softer and uh, has like smaller bridges, whereas this one is like a lot harder. This one you can like literally squeeze and this one you can't. This one is a bit rough sometimes. Sometimes you need it. Again, cheap and accessible because of fitness people. <laughs> the bane of a chronic pain person's life, but also the same. But it's literally <laughs> though. There's so much stuff that's like accessible because fitness people got hold of it. I do think that one of the things, I, I think like it can be overstated how connected like physical feelings and mental feelings are, but I also think it is important to kind of think about, obviously you do exist in like a body that is like, that a lot of it is happening and a lot is like connected and obviously one of the things that's difficult is that like chronic pain sometimes just is happening for no fucking reason and obviously sometimes people have things that like specifically gave them chronic pain but I, I, I guess like my my management technique is, is that like I think it is important to talk about like your feelings um, yeah to see that as like a part of your physical as well as like emotional health I don't think it can like stop the pain or anything but I think it can help you be kind to yourself I think it can help you have like healthy healthy expressions of, of 
what is happening to you and obviously not necessarily connected to experiencing pain like it might just be part of it but mm -hmm. you know I, like when I'm stressed I can definitely feel that my pain gets worse like I just experience more of it or in what in, in more places or whatever so you know it's kind of important to bear that in mind I guess <laughs> I'm gonna do a quick fire round so baths can be mm -hmm. helpful mm -hmm. For me, people giving me massages can be like really painful, but very light massage can be good. Like, as in so light, it's literally just like this. Taking actual painkillers, um, although that often doesn't work, but like sometimes you can get some that hits the sweet spot and it's perfect. <laughs> I, I'm also going to buy a seat cane, which I think is going to change my life. Accepting stuff, very difficult, but it can help because it means you're not fighting yourself and you're trying to work together like as a team to figure out what is like best for you. I think it's worth, like, it's worth spending some time on your pain, right? It's worth, like, doing some stuff to try and mitigate it, especially because, like, I don't know, you're not necessarily going to plateau, right? Or you're not necessarily going to be able to push through, and usually being in pain makes you feel like shit, and it makes you feel worse, and it just brings more and more pain, because you're, like, so tense and not sleeping and everything, so it's worth trying some stuff, especially the cheap and free stuff. For sure. <laughs> Um, Don't underestimate the power of a heat pad, that's what I'm trying truly, to say. <laughs> truly. And also, just fucking lying down, you know? <laughs> Sitting down, switching the lights off, mm. just, you know, do it. <laughs> I also, both of us have a lot of plans to try out lots of things, but, um, you know, so I'm sure this stuff will, like, mm -hmm. change as we, you know, pay m money yeah. for things. Yeah. Maybe. My therapist told me there are these, like, sensory deprivation tanks. So, so, uh, oh, really? Uh, yeah. So I was saying that I like floating, and she was like, oh, well, I can't, I'm not recommending you those because they're expensive, that. but blah, blah, yeah. Because then you're like in a womb. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's very, like, funny, because it's so, like, they're trying to be so scientific about it, and it's just like, no, being in water and floating is nice, like, you don't have to be like, oh, simulating the free of, freeness of the universe, I don't know. <laughs> right, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Um, I guess like maybe I'll try to find some links of like some of the stuff that we talked about and put them in the description box but you know, yeah. obviously a lot of this is like figuring out what is best for us so it might not work for other people. And some of the reasons why they are cheap and accessible are because they're not chronic pain products, right? So then like the ones that are like more specifically for pain are usually harder to get a hold of. Mm. Mm. Cool, okay. I hope you enjoyed this non bookish video. And enjoyed. Oh, him. should we pretend that they're like books are part of our <laughs> <laughs> chronic well, pain management? I mean, I did save like mm. you know Having distractions fun. and yeah. audiobooks and stuff. So I was like, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I read a book about self help and it changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when it's really painful, I lie on a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I hope you're all having a nice time, and I will talk to you when I next talk to you. Bye.